their excellencies, the heads of state who are here, the right honorable secretary general, the honorable ministers, and ladies and gentlemen. I have written something here in handwriting. It is not yet typed, but it will be typed. We are here to celebrate the 25 years of the revived East African community. This is good. And I congratulate the East Africans for achieving this. <clears throat> However, I propose that we also celebrate the more than 1,000 years of trade connectedness of this area. Because when we talk, when we talk of, I was actually thinking what to tell you people, but then God told me that I should tell you this. Because when you say East African community, 1999, but we have been here for more than 1,000 years. So I would like you, the leaders, the intellectuals, to really broaden your thinking. Now I have used the word trade connectedness of this area. Mark those words. Trade connectedness of this area. The, the area of the East African coast, Pwani, the savannah land of central Tanzania and the Great Lakes. These areas have been connected trade-wise for more than 1,000 years. How do, we, how do we know the connectedness in a trade of these areas? How do we know? What evidence do I have? There are earthworks, trenches, in the Zimbabwe district of Uganda, known as Vigobia Mjenyi. There were ancient earthworks like fortifications uh, in Uganda. They are called Vigobia uh, Mjenyi. Those earthworks were built by the dynasty of the Watrezi, that had united a big chunk of that area for a number of centuries. There was a dynasty which united our area there for a number of centuries. The archaeologists did some excavations and found Nkwanzi. Nkwanzi in our local language, in Swahili, I think you would say Ushanga. Nathan Munazita Ushanga. Ushanga. Meaning glass beads. Uh, glass beads. They found cattle bones and engusio. Engusio are the broken pottery pieces. Pieces of broken uh, clay pots. There are also nearby mounds of ancient cow dung. What we call a mungu in our language, the ancient cow dung, heaps. The archaeological items thus recovered were dated to have been used between 900 A.D. and 1350 A.D. These glass beads were being used 900 A.D. up to 1350 A.D. Among those items were the glass beads already talked about. Where had these come from at that time? Where did the glass, where did the Ushanga come from to go 1,000 miles to Uganda? They were not being manufactured in Uganda or anywhere nearby. 
they came from Mesopot Mesopotamia, present-day Iraq, through Pwani coast, Ugogo, Ugogo Dodoma area, Unyamwezi, that is Tabora area, Usukuma, Mwanza, Buzinza, Uzinza huko huko mbele huko baada ya Mwanza, Karagwe, and eventually to Uganda. Therefore, there is no doubt that more than a thousand years ago, this area was a connected trade area, CTA. Can we introduce that? Because you, you, you like to use, you, you like abbreviations. PTA, I don't know what, I don't know. So I have given you now a new one. CTA, Connected Trade Area. Mark you, your excellencies, I'm not using the words free trade area. I will come to that also. FTA. This was not an FTA, it was not a free trade area, but it was a connected trade area. This is because it was, it was, it was not yet a free trade area. It was not an FTA. This is because some of the greedy chiefs along the trade routes were extorting what they were calling Hongo. Hongo, may I knew Hongo to be like bribery, but when I read the literature, it seems as if they were talking about customs, about taxes. When I say my Hongo, you can, of course here I'm being guided by Huntington speak, and Stanley, they are the ones who wrote about this, so I don't know they were using the word Hongo. Hongo meaning like tax or for, for him they wrote Hongo uh, Hongo they, they say Hongo but what they meant was tax so these chiefs well, some of them were extorting a lot of money from the traders excessively taxing the traders there was a notorious chief in Buzinza known as what I came to understand as Rusuarura. When you read, I think it is speak and stand with the right Saurora, Saurora, but it didn't, they were mispronouncing the name. But when I asked one of the Iyara members from Ubuziza, uh, there was an old man in the past, he told me that the name of this chief was Rusuarura of the Bazinza, was very famous for extorting money, extorting, extorting the gifts from traders. The other European travelers had written his name as Uswarora or something like that. He would extort a lot of what they were calling Hongo, that's what they wrote, the Stanley or, or speak, one of them, from the traders. But then there was the giant and the gentle Romanika of Karagwe, who would, on the other hand, give a lot of gifts and, and assist travelers. Romanika was very, 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 very generous to the traders and to the, uh, to the travelers. Speak. And Stanley wrote with a lot of praises about Rumanika, the king of Karagu. Therefore, our area was a connected trade area, but not a free trade area. Through Pwani would get through cost, Pwani's cost. Through Pwani would get Nkwanzi, glass beads, emienda textiles, guns and gunpowder, ETC. Out of the Congo forest, would get a miringa. That is a brass or copper bracelets. 
they are called Emiringa in our, in our language. Engoro. Those are ivory bangles, ivory bangles. Bangles made out of, 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 of ivory. Enyerere. Enyerere, they are worn by women, they are, they are iron, iron coils worn on the legs by women. In fact, when Mwarimu's name first came in the news, 1950s, they were saying Nyerere. Ah, we said this is, we thought it meant that in our area, but later on we, we were told it meant something slightly different. Amoshe, giraffe hair, hair neck wear. From Buhaya, from the Bukova area, we would get, um, our area would get a, a toma, back cloth. From Bunyoro, we would get Omonyo, rock salt. Our ignorant chiefs kept that under utilization of our opportunities for all that time until the Europeans came and captured them. Because this area was connected trade-wise, but our chiefs never used it to, to consolidate it, so the Europeans came and captured it captured the area. Now the Europeans first came to the East African coast in the persons of Vasco da Gama in 1498. Then they disconnected our connected trade area when they colonized the region and fragmented it among the English, Kenya and Uganda, the Germans, Tanganyika, Rwanda and Burundi, Belgians, Congo, the British and the Egyptian South Sudan. So, when these foreigners came, because of our internal weaknesses, now what was a CTA became a DTA, a disconnected trade area. Thereafter, our CTA, connected trade area, became a DTA, disconnected trade area. This was the fault of the chiefs. This definitely was the fault of our chiefs. Vasco da Gama came here in 1498. That is when the first white man came to, to the East African coast, signaling a possible new danger to us. That's how they were called Wazungu. Because I think they were asked, what are you looking for? To Nazunguka. They just said they are going around. Uh, they were going around. Uh, was now, Vasco da Gama came here in 1498. The Berlin Congress that partitioned Africa into, into colonies took place in 1884-85. This is a whole 386 years of our wonderful chiefs watching the danger coming and doing nothing about it. This is just the, the history. It is therefore most commendable that our leaders, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, Marium Julius Nyerere, and Dr. Bote, as soon as we got out of the nightmare of colonialism, took the bold step of the decision to form the Political Federation of East Africa on the 3rd of June, 1963, which is what my daughter, the Secretary General, was talking about. I have already given Her Excellency that picture, and I have also given to His Excellency Ruto, they, they already, I, I've given all the President, even President Kagame, I gave him the picture, that picture of the 3rd of June, 1963. 
But now I have some copies I want to give to Secretary General again and to Yara and to Secretariat. I think I don't know whether they are the same secretaries. And and then to the trade the East African Council, Trade Council. Are you are there traders here? Okay. Bring my, my pictures. I have already given those, the, those pictures to the excellencies, the presidents. Unfortunately, some actors let us down and did not follow up that decision of forming the political federation in 1963. I'm glad Tanganyika and Zanzibar moved ahead and formed Tanzania that has played a very, a very unique role in the liberation of Southern Africa, as well as the fight against Idi Amin in Uganda. Because remember, Mungano, Watanganyika Zanzibar was 1964. That was after Mwalimu and Mzee Karumi noticed the hesitation by Obote and Kenyatta. That's how Mwalimu and, and, and Sheikh Abed said, watch at 20 minutes. Because in the 1963 meeting, Zanzibar, Zanzibaris were not yet independent. I don't think, they were, I don't think in, Zanzibar was independent by, by 1963. Even Kenya was not yet independent, but they were coming to independence. I think Zanzibar got independence in 64. Revolution is Sixty? Sixty-three. 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 Okay. When we didn't want that independence, we did revolution. Okay. So, the, when, when Mr. Obote and, and Mr. Kenyatta hesitated, Tanganyika and Zanzibar went ahead and formed the United Republic of Tanzania. As I said in Soroti the other day, we were in Soroti on another occasion, if that decision had been implemented, the one of 1963, there would have been no problem of Idi Amin in Uganda. Possibly the problems of Rwanda and Burundi could have been solved earlier and with less loss of blood, of life. The Federation of East Africa would have found it easier to deal with the problems of South Sudan and Somalia. We need to remind ourselves that when we had a connected trade area in this area, there was no country called the United States of America. When we had the connected trade area here, when I could trade from coast to Uganda, there was no United States of America. What do we do we say about these ancient societies of ours sitting around for the last 600 years and watching foreigners taking slaves from Africa, building strength until they were strong enough to either to enter the interior of Africa and colonize it? What do we say? Anyway, when we had opportunity to play a role, we did the necessary. Working with Mzee Arab Moy and Ndogo Ben Mkapa, we restored the ESC. It has moved forward. However, there are still obstacles that stunt the growth of these, of these economies. Take the issue of banning pr products or unlicensing uh, them so that they do not enter the member the the other member states you hear people saying that country x has a bumper a bumper crop this year and we therefore not allow products from the the other countries to enter the, that market what then happens 
is that producers of that product migrate to other enterprises and forget about the unlicensed product. Two years down the road, you hear that there is a shortage in the same country X, and they want to buy the product. By that time, the product is no longer being produced in the country that was blocked. Even if Uganda is producing a lot of maize, for instance, we have never banned maize products from other East African countries. If, if we are producing maize, if you have a, a bumper crop, let other means also come and the Ugandans buy whatever is cheaper or better. Instead of saying, this year come, next year don't come, then what happens? I, I, I leave that business and do something else if, the, if there is no sufficient market. We have a, a lot of milk products. However, we have never banned milk products from other countries. The Ugandans, some of the Ugandans there, wanted me to ban Tanzanian rice. That Mpunga wa Tanzania unaua walimaji wa Mpunga wa Uganda. I said if they are dying, they, 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 they are dying easily. So if they are dying, let them die and we get more feed rice growers from, from Tanzania. I could not agree because, you see, there are, there are four mistakes there. Number one, I am forcing Ugandans to buy more expensive rice of the, of the inefficient Ugandan rice growers. That's mistake number one. Number two, I am undermining the Tanzanian rice grower because if he's efficient, we should all encourage him so that he grows, he grows, he grows. But if we deny him the market by administrative means, then we are undermining him. Number three, I am also Kulemaza. Kulemaza is a, our local word meaning to, to cripple my own rice growers. Because if you give them this artificial protection, they will never be efficient. Let them be efficient and compete. With the Tanzanians, why do you why do you protect the inefficient? But number four, then if I ban Tanzanian rice, Tanzania it appears like Sasi ban also something from me. Come, on, mom, I can't be part of that uh, historical mistake. So I said no. If you, if you can't compete with rice, you leave rice and do. Rice in Chakura, our Hindi, our China, and our Wengini. Lima Mohogo, which you can do better. <laughs> I'm glad that Mze Moi and Mze Mkapa worked with me to reconnect the markets of this area. Besides, we went beyond the mere reestablishment of the CTA, Connected Trading Area and we created what is supposed to be a free trade area that also aims at political integration by creating the Federation of East Africa. I salute our brothers of Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, DRC, South Sudan, and Somalia for joining the EC and therefore reconnecting the old CTA. You remember what we had a CTA 1,000 years ago, connected trade area which had been disconnected by, by, by the Belgians and the Germans and all those people who came in because of our weaknesses. So now, the former CTA is now fully assembled. But, but it's now more than a CTA, it is now an FTA, a free trade area. We, it's, we, we have gone up. Let us now consolidate and move forward together. We, the Pan-Africanists, insist on the economic integration of the whole continent of Africa, and in some cases, the political integration of some parts of Africa, such as East Africa, because of the three historic missions we distilled from the beginning. These are prosperity for African people through creating an integrated market that is large enough to buy sustainably goods and services produced or provided by the African wealth creators and workers. 
You see, when we talk of integration, it's not an emotional thing. It's not that well, I want to be with the Kenyans, I want to be with the Tanzanians, I'm dying to, to, to be with this one. No. You need it for your wealth creators. If your wealth creators produce a good or a service, who will buy that good and service sustainably and on a big scale? The good thing is that Africans are asleep. Kulara nai ni vizuri. Because when you are asleep, you don't know where the danger is. A snake can enter your house and kill you and you will die peacefully because you don't know. But when you wake up and you, like the, the Uganda used to be very tribalistic, tribalism, religion, Catholics, Protestants, Muslims. Now, when we, but we have been fighting with them, they have woken up a bit, a bit now. So they produce a lot of milk. The internal market is not enough. The maize, the internal market is not enough. So if the Africans wake up, then the, they will be, be able to see the blindness. If the internal market of Uganda is not enough, if the internal market, I can see Tanzanians are now beginning to sell things into Uganda beans and so on. So now the question is, where do they sell these products? Because there are examples in the world, like United States and Latin America. Latin America has got more Maria city, more natural resources. Mito, Misitu, Madini, Latin America is very rich. I think it could be richer than the United States in terms of natural resources. But you see the poverty in Latin America. What is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? Because of the way they are organized. You cannot succeed to do business in many of the Latin American countries. I think one of the reasons, that's why I heard that you had high level experts and so on. These high level experts could tell us why is it that Latin America is in misery and the United States is very prosperous? Could it be because of the connected market of, of America, of the USA, the fact that the founders of the USA created a big space for wealth creators? If I produce a good or a service, I have got enough buyers to buy it and I can expand. And, 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 and produce more. Could it be that? Let's get an answer from the, the experts. So, reason number one why we support Pan-Africanism is that it will solve the problem of prosperity for our people by creating a big market for them where they can sell what they produce without, lim without, without limit. Now, the second one is that um, strategic security to guard us against all threats from, from wherever. You hear that uh, the Americans have gone to the moon. The Chinese have gone to the moon. The Russians have gone to the moon. Recently, the Indians went to the moon. The Africans are here. <laughs> and, and they are not bothered. <laughs> so, are we going to be like the chiefs? Who do you remember the chiefs? You remember the chiefs? When Vasco da Gama came and passed here, and Azunguka, Azunguka. And they couldn't take the, see the danger and wake up and unite us. So people are going to, what are they going to do at the moon? Sis tuko hapa tu. Waku huko, huko ju, wanatuangalia kama, kama vidudu vili vya vinakula sukari. This is very dangerous. I'm glad you invited me. So, so that I tell you, because you are the one who invited me.
So, integration is about the two points. Prosperity for our people. Where would this prosperity come from? Ustawi wa jamii unatokana na naomba omba. Begging. Because if that, uh, you, you hold it, you, you, you are strong. Uh, this is the one I'm giving you. This is Mwarimu uh, Obote Mzee Kenyatta na wengine. Federation this year. This was 1963. Mm -hmm. So one is for you again. The other one is for Iyala. The other one is for somebody else. You, you take them. So the the strategic security is very dangerous. When you hear people going to the moon and we are here, Uganda is developing. Uganda will become is, even Tanzania has joined the Kenya joined the middle income status some time ago. Tanzania has joined. We also have joined, the, although they, are, they have not declared us. Uh, uh, we are waiting for the headmaster to declare. I don't know. <laughs> but we are developing. But even if we develop, even if Uganda becomes a first world country, can we afford to go to the moon? Can we afford? Why hasn't UK gone to the moon? They are here with us. UK, France, what happened to this? Wahindi wamekwenda kwenye mwezi, wamekuja, lakini the other fellows are here with us. So there is something about size. You, you need size to be able to do certain things. And in order to achieve this, so the first, why we insist on Pan-Africanism? Number one, prosperity for our people. But number two, strategic security, to be able to guard ourselves against all these adventurers. And using the undugu that God gave us, we are lucky. All these people we are talking about are either similar or the same. And in the case of East Africa, we've got even Swahili, which is a common language. The other day, I gave a speech briefly elaborating on each of these in Soroti, not to mention the many other documents in which I have discussed these issues. My speech in Soroti is annexed to this short statement. They will type it. What I want to highlight on this occasion is the question, why should this ancient connected trade area of more than 1,000 years of similar or linked people be lagging behind countries that do not even exist when this CTA was 1,600 years old? Because by the time the Carambas went to America, 1492, our CTA had been here for 600 years or more. Our connected trade area, this area we are talking about. The Kenya side, the connect connection was not so much because of the Maasai. The Maasai were stopping trade from the coast. But here, we had very this ancient uh, uh, co connectivity. Maybe the other question would be, who would lose if this ancient land of our peoples that has been connected trade-wise for more than 1,000 years was to integrate firmly, both economically and even politically? I thank everybody. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for those words of wisdom. You are indeed a walking encyclopedia of history, and we really thank you for your wisdom. We take away your key words to Pan-Africanism, that is prosperity, strategic security, and brotherhood. 
we take away your emphasis on wake up, consolidate, move forward, and unite. We are celebrating 1,025 years of a connected trade area.